And so now you guys have um, grow, been growing very rapidly. You were telling me earlier that you were hiring like a salesperson a week. Yeah, we talk about that, like the challenges of just growth and how do you yeah. how do you recruit? What's recruiting like now? Sure. It's gotten people say it's gotten super. You know, in California and just there's like massive uh, talent battles going on. Yep. Um, can you yep. talk about that? Sure. More? Yeah. Easy. Um, so you know, early on, we were really really conservative with hiring uh, headcount just in terms of numbers because we hadn't clearly hit kind of the intersection of we've got a lot of users and we know how to monetize them, mm. right? So we we're really careful. Um, Mebo is now at the point where it's like, okay, we have a lot of users, we do know how to make money on them, and so now we're scaling the business. And scaling brings unique challenges. I and mean, we started this year at about 130 employees. I think we're at 175 now. So that for wow. us, that's really fast growth. Yeah, that's very fast. And we were just on a, yeah, for 12 weeks, we had to hire a salesperson a week. And if we didn't, we would have missed our revenue numbers later this year, right? Because we didn't have enough people selling our ads. Um, and it's really, really hard. It's, oh, it's hard both because it's a really hot market right now, right? So hiring salespeople, hiring engineers, all of these positions are in high demand and really hard to find. Um, so, so that's tough. But the other thing you have to deal with as is you know kind of a CEO running a company like this is it's a totally different ball game running a 60 person company and running a 175 person company, right? Like processes just start breaking, communication lines yeah. just start breaking down, right? People all of a sudden don't know everybody in the company. Mm. And so dealing with scaling the company and, and what does it look like to run a company that goes from 60 to you know 170? That that's a lot of work, and that's the stuff you know you're going to be focusing on that like every day as you do the scaling thing. Can you talk a little bit more about the the uh, the, the the recruiting challenge now? I mean, because I think you also mentioned to me earlier that the fact that so many people, more people are starting companies has drained yep. the talent pool. Yep. I assume you know you see these reports that Facebook tried to you know recruit somebody out of Google and they countered with some massive yeah. stuff that startups probably can't. You know. can't, yeah, startups are not going to meet those. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> startups will not pay people yeah. that much money. Uh, <laughs> they I can't. mean, so you know, is that is so? How is the environment? Uh... Um, yeah, it's you know, Mebo has a number of recruiters on staff for mm. our relatively small size because recruiting is so hard mm. and so important. Um, and so we consider that team like a crucial team inside Mebo. Um, and it's really tough, you know, we, to every function kind of has their own thing that really really drives them. Engineers want to build awesome product. Right, they they want to change the world. Like Mebo is trying to pil build a pillar of the internet. That's kind of what what I call it. Yeah. Um, and so if you if an engineer is really passionate about the problem that they are going to solve, then they can get excited about your startup, which cannot offer you know the same amount of money maybe as like a Google or a Facebook, but can give that engineer really meaningful equity. So that if you do build that pillar of the internet, then the engineer makes out very very well. Um, financially, and they get to work on something that's truly impactful. Yeah, I find, I find they care most about the product, uh, the, the project, and also uh, the p other people they work with a exactly. lot, oh, too. Like working with other, with other good engineers. Like it's good engineers sort of yep. beget more good engineers because yep. they like to work together. Yeah, we actually, our hiring process is kind of revolves around that. So um, there are a bunch of interviews that are kind of your standard interviews, but then Mebo has this thing that we call the SIM, where you literally sit on our engineering floor. And we do this for every job, but in engineering we do it too. You sit on our engineering floor and you code a project with our people, right? So you see what it's like to work in our team environment. Or, you know, like we're hiring a CFO right now. So we're having CFOs run us through. It's like, hey, it's your first week in the office. Talk us through what the major, you know, business levers and value drivers are in our business. Like, lead us through that discussion. Mm -hmm. So we're we're very careful to create that team environment in the interviewing process for both us, so we can see how that person acts in the team environment, and for them to see how we communicate with each other. So you mentioned that that each um, type of hire has different. Um uh, different things that they look for. Uh, yeah. So engineers, you you discussed. Yeah. And then there's salespeople, for yep. example. Salespeople have something different. So e everyone has something. Are they less culture driven and more just sort of cash comp? That's, no, that's, actually, that's the that's the that's the that's stereotype. The, that's or? the stereotype. I don't think that's actually completely correct. So um, some things I've found uh, in, with sales folks, um, they really do care about the team. Mebo actually has a very unique uh, comp structure where we don't do a normal sales comp. Rather, we operate a little bit more on a team goal, mm. um, and our our folks so it's more love shared that. bonuses versus right. kind of more like shared bonuses. Eat what you kill or whatever. And that means that inside our sales team, our people don't compete with each other, mm. right? They are a team, and so our folks in LA can collaborate with our folks in New York 
rather than competing between LA and New York, which happens a lot when you're not on something of a team goal. Um, another one is like sales folks are thinking about the development of their careers, just like engineers want to, you know, learn new languages, learn new skills. Sales folks want to learn new customers, learn new clients, right? So one of our sales development folks was actually just telling me yesterday, his name's Rick. Uh, Rick was telling me, hey, you know, when we're hiring salespeople, something they really think about is who, who's my customer list, right? Who am I going to learn about? Who am I going to learn to develop myself on? Um, so that's a big deal. So mm -hmm. the stereotype, I think, is is wrong, right? And for folks who are only cash driven in sales, those are probably not the people that you want in kind of an early build yeah. of a sales team. You want folks who want to better themselves. You want yeah. folks who want to better the team, who really care about the culture. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, maybe our kind of unique positioning around the way we do comp for sales folks weeds out the folks who only care about just like straight cash and really want to be part of a team that's collaborative that's doing something really meaningful in the market. What uh, what type of behavior do you encourage in the office and what type of behavior do you not tolerate? Um, that's a great question. So we look for people who are open, mm -hmm. team-oriented, and collaborative. And at the same time, they must be very proactive and take ownership. So it's very hard to find someone who takes ownership and is proactive, yet is very open, team-oriented, and collaborative. That's what we look for. How do you even, you know, screen for that? Like, um, we have very specific questions in our interviewing process. And so when our folks go into interview, like if you were interviewing me, you would know I'm looking for, you know, is this guy open or not? And you will ask a bunch of questions and look for scenarios mm -hmm. in my past where I've been open. So you will screen for that. Someone else will screen for, are you proactive? Do you take initiative? Do you find that, that looking at people's, um, that for example, like, that people that come from big companies tend to, I mean, I found, for example, I, you, you interview someone from a big company and they say, well, how would you do this? They say, well, I'd send that to the team in Kansas. And you're like, well, there's no team in Kansas. You know? yeah. So, I mean, do, do you find that there's certain pools from which you find those types of people? Um, you know, it's a, that would be the bias. But I think that um, large company folks who do end up working at Mebo, there is sometimes a little of like, you know, not being used to what a small company is like, but but they figure it out really quickly. Mm -hmm. And we'll only bring the folks into Mebo who we do think like, kind of want to roll up their sleeves and do it themselves and not yeah. just farm out to teams. I see. Um, so yeah, we kind of screen that out when we find it.